Hello everyone, it is February 9th, 2021, times 1135 CST, it's 13 degrees Fahrenheit out, and it's GeoRant time, GeoRant number 137, and today I am going to be talking about the QAPF diagram, which is also known as the Streckinson diagram and the IUGS diagram, or plot, you can use plot. Anyway, this is a ternary plot, but I'll get into that a little bit later. Anyway, QAPF stands for, this is the most common one, and it's basically what the chart is plotted on, so it's, this is the terminology I prefer. Q stands for quartz, A stands for alkali feldspar, also case bars, there's several uh, minerals that can be there, same thing with plagioclase. F is feldspathoids, which we usually abbreviate as thoi, fo, <laughs> as foids, and foids and quartz cannot physically form together in from a melt. So when we're talking about igneous rocks here, okay, so these are for igneous rocks, and as magma or lava, you know, a melt cools, I, you're either going to get quartz at, at the very end or you're going to get foids, but the two will not form together, okay? It's a physical impossibility, just like you can't get salt by, you know, mixing, you know, I don't know, <laughs> uh, uh, gold and oxygen, okay? <laughs> it is not going to happen. All right. Uh, these are other terms, Struckinson diagram or IUGS, which is the body responsible for the plot founded in 1961 but like I said this is what it actually physically is so it's the terminology I tend to use now when you have an igneous rock in hand visually you're going to want to use a QAPF plot uh, there are other plots you can use if you have chemical analysis ability and stuff like that but you're not going to be able to to do those with with by visual methods at least not reliably so you use this ternary plot and there's two you're going to use one of two all right i'm going to show you which one you pick so here's your two okay all right we're going to talk about both of these so which one do you decide to use well basically if you have a coarse grained igneous rock you are going to use the phaneritic one if you have a fine grained igneous rock you are going to use the aphanitic one here what do you mean by coarse versus fine grain? Well, if you can barely see the crystals make them out with your naked eye, you have a fine grained one, okay? And we argue a little bit about where that line is. It's not like with a sand where it has a definite definition. It varies a little depending on who you ask. But I do, in my lab books, I have a definite line set for these. But let's say you have a coarse grained igneous rock a phaneritic rock now people will also call this chart the one used for intrusive rocks or plutonic rocks we have in geology since the 1990s actually starting in the 80s trying to get away from classifying rocks by their origins yet our three basic rock types are basically origin in nature igneous sedimentary and metamorphic but we name those oh was it 19th it might even be 18th century but anyway i digress so we are if you want to use the name the proper name it's a phaneritic chart because it's coarse grain that's what that means you know you look at the grains it's a physical property these are interpretive this is based on texture that you can visually classify so anyway so what kind of rocks fall in here you see within this black area you can divide it up but that's your granites okay and here you have your you tonalites and granodiorites. Why is this in red, Steve? Well, this is something I want to talk about here real quick. In the Archean, up until the late Archean, we don't really have any true granites. We have these, which are called TTGs, tonalite, granodiorite, and I forget what the other G is, but it falls somewhere in here as well. So that tells us plate tectonics wasn't really in operation, but I just divided them out so you would see where they are on the diagram. The stuff in the yellow triangle here is stuff you're almost never going to see. I've shown you some in the Upper Peninsula because they do exist. Uh, this 20 is marked for a reason which we'll get back to. So your QAPF is in orange. You use this chart for what we call felsic to mafic rocks. So your felsic intermediate mafic rocks. What does that mean? You're going to use it for anything but ultra mafic rocks. These are for, this is for ultramafic rocks like peridotite down here and you can divide mafics out further by using this but it's not necessary you can stop if they plot down here because um you uh you know gabbros are down here and stuff like that so gabbro so basically this is going to have a fine-grained 
equivalent. And that's where this is gonna come in, your affinitic chart, and I'll get back to this. I just wanna talk about this a little quick. Now, no matter which one of these two you're using, there is a process you're going to use to get an actual plot here so you can name your rack. Now, first, remember what I said, quartz and feldspathoids cannot form together. So if you have voids, you will not be using this part of the chart. You will be using this part, and this applies for the other one as well. You'll be using the bottom of that one as well. If you do have quartz, you're going to be using the QAP part, okay? So if you have quartz, use the QAP triangle. If you have feldspathoids, use the FAP diagram, all right? And that applies to both of them relative to one another. Top, top for quartz, bottom for lack of quartz, okay? Now, in order to be a granite or something, you need have to have at least 20% quartz, okay? And this will put it here. Now, when you classify these things, when you classify these rocks, you're going to eliminate accessory minerals. Like if there's a little bit of biotite or peroxide, you just ignore that, all right? So you're going to do your relative percents and you're gonna get a amount of quartz and a percent, you're gonna get an amount of case bar and a percent, and you're gonna get an amount of plagioclase and a percent. Now, what you first do, and say you've got 33%, 33%, and 33%, we'll just use 99, you know, you know, whatever. You got a third, a third, and a third. Okay, so you have a third of quartz, so that's the easiest plot. You plot that first, that's more than 20%, it's going to be here. Okay, so it's gonna be somewhere along this line. Now you've got a third and a third, you need to renormalize. You need to normalize a second time. So that means you have to make that 67% or whatever, that two thirds into 100%, which means your 33% is gonna become 50 and your other 33% is gonna become 50. So you have half plagioclase and half alkali feldspar. So what you do then is you draw your line down here. And in that case, it's a 50-50. So we are firmly going to have our plot right about here firmly within a granite, specifically a monzo granite if you want to divide it further. So you have to normalize twice. This does not function like the USDA chart. Basically, the USDA chart, when you get rid of uh, anything coarser than sand, you basically plot three lines and where they intersect, you take your, your diagram. This doesn't work that way. You have to normalize twice, okay? Same one's the other way, all right? Now, I don't like this chart, but it's the best one I could find online really quick. And as you can see, rhyolites will tend to be the fine grain version of your granites and, uh, you know, your, your granites and cyanites, and then your dacites are equivalent to your TTGs, that kind of stuff. Okay, so they're just a fine grain version of that. And you can determine a rock type using hand lens and microscopic without an electron analysis to get this stuff. All right, in most cases, and plus phenocrysts might key in on it because magma phenocrysts, not xenoliths, phenocrysts tend to be reflective of the affinitic part as well. If you have a phenocryst, phenocrysts in something that's mostly fine grained, you'd still plot it here. Okay, same thing. If you have voids, you plot down, you use this chart, your FAP. If you have quartz, you use your QAPF. Now, what I don't like about this is they use the USDA base. You see how you see these lines going like this? Ignore those. And you see how they have these angled. That is incorrect. That is a USDA translation. They just use that as their base and put it here. I don't know who did this, but it's not right. But you would normalize twice just like you would for the coarse grain stuff and here they have orthoclase and that should say alkali feldspar orthoclase is not the only alkali feldspar also known as a case bar there are others so that's not correct either <laughs> so uh but the but everything in here the borders and stuff are essentially correct and like i said you can translate this stuff into you know, uh, uh Phaneritic component. This is affinitic fine grain. Now, you know, this is also known as a volcanic or extrusive chart, but, you know, we're trying to move away from that kind of stuff. And plus, it doesn't really make sense because you can see basalt is on here. And actually, uh, basalt can be up here a little bit too. But whatever. This I'm just demonstrating something to you here a little bit. So, you know, basalts, you think of them as extrusive volcanic rocks, but I can take you to Ontario, the Upper Peninsula, and show you basalt dikes sitting within rocks. Those obviously didn't reach the surface, so they aren't extrusive. You see why this naming things by 
by uh, origin becomes a problem because there's always big exceptions, so this is better. But anyway, we're past 10 minutes. So I'm gonna leave that there. You just gotta remember, first thing to sum it up, if you wanna do it visually, you have to find out if you have an affinitic or phaneritic rock, which chart you're going to use. Then you determine whether or not you have a FOID. If you do, you use the FAP. If not, you use the CAP okay part and then you do your normalization you probably the amount of quartz in this case it would be the amount of foids and then after you do that after you renormalize for your two remaining things your case bar and your plagioclase and then you plot your line again which is going to swing back or forth like this okay so it's just two line plot anyway that's it if you have any questions or comments please leave them below and i hope you learned something